Hey, Wizard. So I just wanted to do some updates very quickly on the Arbidex tool because I've had a lot of people, you know, writing in uh, with emails and updates who are testing this out. And actually, I'm really grateful for the amount of people who have seen this tool. You know that I'm messing around, creating these apps, you know, looking for Edge, etc. Loads of people have just jumped on it and have been sending me emails and asking for updates, etc. And also pointing some things out. So I've made some improvements to the tool. Some just very quick and dirty uh, improvements. I believe uh, one of the wizard's names is Drew. I could have that wrong. I don't collect people's first names, etc. So when someone signs up, I only ever collect their email. And that's just so that they can log in and out with email. I don't like holding any user data whatsoever. Um, but this this person had actually written in and said, hey, you know, great tool and everything. But can we can we add some filters, etc. to make this better? Um, and this is actually a shout out to that person. So a couple quick updates just made to the tool. So the first thing is, you'll see here, we've got the quantity of one, which was just defaulted before to be on all of these items. So if I get rid of this up here now, you'll see that that starting amount is blank. I could now put this as 100, and that'll be 100 as a starting point for any token. So for example, it could be WBNB, BUSD, Cake, whatever it is. And speaking of cake and other coins, let's say that I want to also filter only on certain coins. So here I can just now type the name of the coin. So for example, Bondly, if it appears anywhere on a ARB, then it'll show here in the filter or cake. You know, cake is now showing up. Maybe I only want the ones that include swamp. So here I'm just going to put in swamp. Um, right now casing is important, but you know, when I have the time, I'll come back in and change it so that you can put lower or upper case or whatever. But right now it just needs to be spelt the same way it is, um, on the token. I just wanted to get the change in place. So hopefully that saves you a lot of time. I think, you know, some of the other, uh, changes and requests put in were, Hey, can we help have a pre-calculate depth? I think that's a really good idea. The issue that I've had is number one, the amount of API requests that can be made. And there's, uh, that doesn't mean to say there's not a way around that. There's, there's definitely ways around that. It just takes time to program that in. The other issue is latency. So, you know, one of the, the folk who had actually signed up for this tool um, had actually signed up to, and said, hey, you know, these prices are definitely not updated every three minutes. I've actually gone and checked that and they are, I think, what's going on here is probably a misunderstanding in terms of how the prices are updated. Um, it could be that and it could be that when you were logged in, it actually wasn't, you know, um, there are issues sometimes where say a server drops out and it has to be restarted, etc. So you know, that could just be as well, I definitely don't want to say this tool is perfect, it is far from perfect. And as usual, I don't actually recommend anyone signs up for you know, a lot of these tools, especially the arbitrage ones, because they are uh, as another person who wrote in said, these are passion projects of mine. You know, Crypto Wizards is like Sean's Patreon on steroids. You can think of it that way. Um, you know, this is me sharing the tools that I like to use and explore with, with everyone. So, but I think what's happening here is, you know, the surface rate is calculated by looking at the reserves. So in terms of pancake swap, it's looking at the amount of reserves and dividing one, you know, by the other. The, the reason I did it that way is that's how I learned to do it from someone else. So, you know, I had to figure out how do I get surface rate prices for pancake swap and by and large for the most, most of the time they're correct. The other thing that can go wrong, for example, is let me click on swamp as an example. There might be a swamp on pancake swap with a different contract address. So just check that the one you're looking at is the same one. Um, some of them, when you go and calculate the depth, you know, if I put in here a depth of one, so, you know, always use one if you want to check it against how the surface rate was calculated. Surface rate is always calculated just by taking the reserves dividing by the other reserves. Therefore, an input of one is kind of what you want to, you know, what you want to go for. So this here is saying, you know, there's some ridiculous amount of arbitrage. Obviously, when you go and uh, actually, let me just do that with one. I'm guessing this one against cake, when you actually go and look at it online, you will see that it's, you know, it's really not tradable, right? It's absolutely not tradable. Um, so either that or it's not tradable on anything above one, right? So just bear that in mind, you know, when you're looking at this tool, the way it's calculating is looking at the reserve balances when you're looking at pancake swap. The other thing is when you're going into the depth, it is using the quote 
um, the, the quote contract as part of the smart contract. It is getting it from the blockchain. So, you know, that is something that's happening. But when you go and actually trade this for real, you might actually find you don't get that same rate. And it's just the nature of the beast. And also, frankly, it's the nature of me still getting into the detail of how, you know, how this could work even better. So th there's a lot that I need to still learn. But right now, this is with the time I've got, this is the best I can get it. It doesn't mean to say I won't be working on it to get it better. I think, you know, if you look at Uniswap, for example, so I'll just take this, the filters out. Uniswap is actually using the GraphQL prices that are quoted and are available on Uniswap V3 through the subgraph. So the surface rates are going to be much more accurate, I would say, on Uniswap and much more tested, etc., and made available. Um, the liquidity, etc., I would say are the same. And you'll notice when you look at Uniswap, there's far fewer opportunities. The only thing I did notice with PancakeSwap is I did find real opportunities. So when I was developing this, there were real opportunities. I think I showed you one of them uh, as an example. Um, the final thing I want to say is, you know, again, just don't sign up to Crypto Wizards if, you know, you're looking for a sure way to make money um, with, you know, tri triangular arbitrage or, you know, just straightforward swap arbitrage, etc. If you're interested in arbitrage, the best emails I'm getting are for the Z-score, which I did a recent video on as well. This is a really cool tool. Um, to me, it's probably next to the, you know, the data engineer, machine learning and back trader. It's like the most useful tool on crypto wizards. So definitely don't. And in fact, I'm going to log out for a second and just take you over to the sign up page on crypto wizards. So this is where, you know, I put the list of things that are available when you sign up. In fact, I need to add RBDEX onto this. Clearly, I didn't do this. But, you know, I put frequently asked questions here as well. Um, and I think the key thing here is just to say, you know, don't sign up. So don't sign up if you're expecting free money. I, I'm not promising arbitrage signals that are going to ch change your life. Please don't sign up. I have a full time job. I don't you know, I don't need people to have to sign up. I don't need to push crypto wizards on anyone. This is really for people like me who have this as a passion and want to make use of the tools that I'm building the same way I'm getting access to them. This is just to become a wizard like me. So please don't sign up if you're expecting anything um, amazing to come out of these arbitrage tools because you won't get it. You might get the occasional great trade on arbitrage or you might use it like other traders do to give you signals on how you might want to trade things in a way that other people aren't using them. I know people have used crypto wizards in all kinds of creative ways. So, you know, by all means, go for it. But this, again, is not a, a site for signals for you to go and trade and, and make money by doing that. You know, this is a personal hobby, a professional project or a professional personal project hobby of mine, something that I'm enormously passionate about and that I, I think about all the time, even when, you know, I'm doing other work. So just bear that in mind. But those are the updates. You know, um, you did request them from me on RBDEX to put in. I hope that you find those really useful. And then there are other things I'm looking to add to RBDEX. You're right. Trader Joe is something I'm really interested in. And if anyone watching this knows how to connect to Trader Joe, um, it'll save me a lot of time. It's only because I've got loads of things that I'm working on. Now that I've taken some time off from work during the holidays, I'm going to be doing videos. I'm going to be, you know, working on the um, Code Your Own Triangular Arbitrage course, etc., uh, to put on the site and to put on Udemy. So, you know, these are all the things I'm going to be just, I'm just forcing myself to just get through as fast as possible before I hit the next slog of work when I return back to work. So those are just some updates from you. Anyhow, I hope you found this useful and I hope you like the updates that I've put on there. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.